Great. So welcome uh, today to today's webinar on how to build effective BDS campaigns targeting the HP companies. Uh, we're so glad to have you. My name is Anna Balser. I'm Director of Organizing and Advocacy at the U.S. Campaign to End the Israeli Occupation, uh, which is a national coalition um, in the United States of hundreds of organizations working together for freedom, justice, and equality uh, through campaigns challenging all forms of U.S. complicity with Israel's occupation and apartheid regime. Um, and we're excited to be hosting today's webinar with the Palestinian Boycott, Divestment, Sanctions, BDS, National Committee, uh, the BNC, and one of today's pre presenters will be Gareth Ruiz, who is the BNC's new North American Advocacy Advisor. So we're very excited um, to, to be co-hosting today's webinar. And Gareth and I are both part of a broader, uh, growing international network of organizations that are waging campaigns to boycott and divest from HP companies. And we'll be hearing from four of those campaigns uh, on today's webinar alone. And on our first webinar of this two-part series, we heard why HP is such an important target. We learned how HP presents itself as a socially responsible corporation, but actually manages people uh, for profit. At prisons from California to Palestine, how it, how it enables the deadly Israeli blockade of Gaza, some pictures from, uh, from prisons. Um, we heard how just as Polaroid was a major boycott target during the apartheid era, era for providing imaging for South Africa's notorious caste system, HP must be targeted today for providing imaging for Israel's notorious checkpoints today. And all this information and more can be found on a great website, which is AFSC.org slash investigate. And it's, it outlines the complicity of Hewlett Packard and other divestment targets. We heard on yes on last um, on the last webinar how HP has been splitting into multiple companies, what we can now call the family of HP companies, but that they all remain targets so long as they share offices, management, supply chains, branding, and continue to buy and bid together. And they are all involved in various ways in oppressive practices in Palestine and worldwide. And for those of you who are looking for a good BDS target, we want to do all we can to support you in targeting HP in your community. And we're hoping that this webinar will give you a sense of possible ways of engaging in the boycott so you can choose which one is best for your group and your, your context. Uh, Garrick and I both hope you'll be in touch if you're doing a campaign so that we can actually bring your group and your campaign into the boycott uh, HP network. So you're literally the first to hear about this, but the Boycott HP Network actually just decided to coordinate an international days of action later this year. Um, so this is the first time it's being announced, but the official launch has yet to come. Uh, so please don't post it anywhere, um, but just definitely keep it on your radar so hopefully your city can take part too, especially if you're building an HP campaign. Um, and stay tuned for details. The last thing I'll mention is that I'll be sending a follow-up email with any of the websites and resources that are mentioned during the webinar, so you don't have to kind of frantically scribble, uh, scribble them down during the webinar itself. So our first speaker is a surprise. Um, HP is not just an international target, it's a target inside Palestine itself, uh, which is all the more reason for those of us in the international community to join the campaign. So Tamara Taufik Tamimi is joining us from Jerusalem, and she just finished her master's degree in human rights law, and she's part of the youth organization Metarakim, which she'll be talking about, which works on Palestinian freedom of movement and has worked on boycotting HP. And this is a screenshot of, a, of an amazing video that they made. I'll send out the link after the call. Um, rec highly recommend everyone watching it, and welcome uh, to Tamara. Thank you, Anna, for the introductions, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, um, yes, the introductions were great. Thank you very much, Anna. And basically, how um, I promise I'm not going to take a lot of your time by explaining how we work here in, inside Palestine on boycotting HP. But uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, we take pride in uh, um, having been able to identify other uh, alternative uh, companies that uh, would serve as alternatives to HP because um, one of the um, most uh, important things when it comes to uh, these kinds of solidarity uh, movements uh, from our perspective 
customs that we we, we as uh, the people calling for them uh, abide by them and try our best as much as we can instead of of simply asking the international community to stand in solidarity with Palestine. And so it is from this premise that the uh, Mitharkin campaign that Anna has mentioned has emerged. I would like to just give a little bit of a background to the uh, campaign before I proceed with uh, explaining what we have done so far in the campaign. And so the uh, campaign is part of a wider project. The project is called Palestinian Youth Together for Change. The uh, project is administrated by three uh, organizations. Um, in the West Bank, it's administrated by the uh, organization Palestinian Vision. In Gaza, it's uh, administrated by the uh, American Friends Service Committee, the one that Anna mentioned earlier with the investigate tool uh, that is available online. Uh, they administer the project in Gaza. And in uh, 1948 territories, uh, the project is uh, administrated by Baladna, Arab Youth Association. And so the idea of the project was to bring 60 Palestinian youth, 20 from the West Bank, including Jerusalem, 20 from Gaza, and 20 from 48 territories, and provide them with a platform to work together on uh, a priority issue that they identify together. And so one of the things that we wanted to work on was uh, freedom of movement, because it has such a wide-scoped impact on fragmenting Palestinian national identity. And so in the beginning phases of the project, we worked on the production of policy papers on generating a, a certain discourse for the group and all of these preparatory things. And then after that, we decided to move onwards to something that is a little bit more tangible. And through our identification in the policy papers of the limitations of legal advocacy, on an international level, we decided to do uh, to, to instigate a more grassroots uh, campaign in order to uh, push for the realization of Palestinian freedom of movement. And um, we went. In, we have done some research and decided that okay, there are several uh, private sector companies, international or multi multinational corporations, let's say that are uh, complicit in violating Palestinian freedom of movement. Um, the list included other than HP, uh, Barclays Bank, um, Caterpillar, um, like we prepared like a list of seven or something. And then through different discussions and um, a certain process, we decided to tackle HP. The main idea uh, that we decided to tackle HP for, like Anna said earlier, is because uh, the siege on Gaza, the facilities that they provide on the checkpoints, the biometric system, all of these uh, uh, services provided by HP that are facilitating an infringement on freedom of movement of Palestinians. And so we decided that we are going to um, target uh, multiple actors in the Palestinian society. So uh, we wanted to target students who will be entering university level because usually we had the um, rationale that these students would be uh, looking into buying a laptop or uh, or like their need for a laptop would increase the moment they enter the university and so we identified them as a viable target. We decided to uh, also target the Palestinian civil society, whether we are talking about universities or non-governmental organizations. And we uh, targeted also official institutions. Uh, civil society also included the trade unions, syndicates, and um, yes, basically. And so uh, uh, we tar our main uh, mechanism of targeting uh, these uh, target groups were uh, awareness raising workshops about the complicity of HP in violating Palestinian freedom of movement and providing them with a list of alternatives that are not co uh, complicit in the cause that we are working towards. And so students have signed pledges of uh, not buying an HP product. The same applies for uh, civil society organizations. It, 
I, I'd like just to go back to the students, uh, one step backwards. The students, we targeted them through the workshops, but then the main mobilization work and advocacy work was with the student unions. And all of them have, um, in all West Bank and Gaza Strip universities, they came on board to um, pledge to continue in uh, raising the awareness of students and telling them that to consider buying a product that is not produced by HP. Um, the same was for civil society organizations. They signed a pledge that uh, when they renew their uh, products and, and facilities, that they will not buy any HP product. This for official institutions and so forth. And so, in the pledge that they signed, uh, they said that they would exclude the tenders of HP automatically. That they would not even consider them in the first place in order to overcome any marketing uh, appeal, that uh, whether it is financial or service-wise, that the tenders would be automatically excluded from the uh, process. Uh, that was observed with a number of syndicates, a large number of civil society organizations, and so forth. And so the campaign is continuing. There is continuous uh, follow-up with these uh, um, institutions, universities, civil society organizations, and official institutions, political parties uh, as well were targeted uh, widely uh, by the group in the Gaza Strip. And uh, yes, uh, that's basically it uh, to build on the current achievements that have uh, been made. Uh, one last thing that the project has uh, done was that. Uh, the project primarily is funded uh, also by the American Plant Service Committee. And so in March 2015, three, uh, three participants, one from Gaza, one from the West Bank, and one from uh, 48 territories has, have uh, went abroad to the United States. Uh, in the United States, it was the, uh, the annual corporation meeting of the American Plant Service Committee. And the three uh, young ladies, they went on speaking in Philadelphia, Omaha, in Nebraska, Des Moines, in Iowa, Washington, D.C., and uh, New York City, have met with more than 27 solidarity groups and familiarized them with the violations perpetrated by HP and their complicity in uh, violating Palestinian freedom of movement, and uh, many of which ha uh, have pledged to also boycott HP on an uh, international level. This is the work that we have done over the past three years in a nutshell. And um, like, uh, as promised, I do not want to bore you very much with the details. So if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to share them with me in the questions tab. Thank you so much, Tamara. Um, great to hear about the campaign there. and. Um, as I said before, you know, we, we do a lot of BDS campaigns, but rarely is there a, um, a similar or a campaign with the same target happening at the same time in Palestine. So it's just really um, a great opportunity to hear about your campaign, and it's very inspiring for the rest of us around the world um, to, uh, to keep building um, on this campaign. Um, so if you guys have questions for Tamara or any of the other uh, um, panelists, you can uh, chat them in through the questions feature. And if you're joined by phone but, um, but not online, online, you can send in questions by just replying to the email that I sent with details for this call. Um, and those will go to Rama, who's doing tech support, and she can, she can bring those questions forward. Our second guest is Salim Alam, elected member of the Executive Committee of Palestine Solidarity Campaign in the United Kingdom. He's chair of West London PSC Palestine Solidarity Campaign as well. And he's been active in BDS campaigns against Ahava, SodaStream, Veolia, and G4S in the UK. And he'll be talking about how the PSC is going about targeting HP. Uh, welcome, Salim. OK. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes, we can. Suppose, uh, OK, thank you. So thanks, everybody. Um, I've, thanks so much for uh, asking me to um, talk to you about the HP campaign. Um, I've got 10 minutes uh, and I'm going to just run through what we've done in the UK. Um, just to say I'm not suggesting and that this is the only way to do it or this is how you should do it. 
but I thought it would be worth sharing um, our experience of uh, the UK campaign. So um, I've got the first slide up there. Is that, can you see that or not? No, you can't. So I need to share my screen, don't I? Can you see that, Anna? Can someone tell me whether you can see that? Yes, sorry, I was on mute. Um, uh, we can see it now. It was my fault. I had to change you the presenter. We can see uh, the PowerPoint just, just right. Okay. All right. So um, this is just a, the slide. It's, it's a case study. Um, if I go to the first slide, um, one of the things that we did um, is, based on our experience of other campaigns, is we did do quite a lot of planning and thinking. And none of this, I think, is rocket science. I think none of this will be a surprise to anyone. But I just thought we'd set it out. We did think, what is our strategy? We did then sit down and talk about putting together a plan, which obviously includes what to do, who's going to do it, when's it going to be done, how's it going to be done, what are our resources and what are our priorities. That thinking stage took um, a month or so. The planning stage took much longer, uh, three, four months, and I'll, 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 mainly because we have to put the resources together. Uh, we then had, a, as part of that plan, we had to then actually go and do something, and that was to execute the plan, so organize and act. Uh, and then the other thing we've been keen to do is whenever we have done something, whether it's launching the website, the Facebook, uh, any materials, do think about the outcomes and do think about uh, what has changed in the external environment, if anything, then do have a process to review that and measure that and then feed that back into the plan. Um, there's a dotted line there to the strategy. If there was something major happens, then uh, you may have to or we may have to review our strategy, but that's not what we are at the moment. So that's the template we've used. We've tried to go about it in a structured way based on experience from other campaigns. If I go to the next slide, uh, so strategy, um, I'll let you just read that. Uh, it's only three lines. I don't think any of that is a surprise. Uh, the strategic aim is that HP ceases its involvement in Israel's occupation. This includes uh, exiting existing contracts and not renewing uh, contracts and not entering into new contracts. We then had to think about, well, how are we going to achieve that strategic aim? And there are many ways, I guess, we could have thought that we would achieve it. Um, you can think about making an economic impact uh, by getting them to lose contracts. But based on our other campaigns that I've been involved in and others in the group, we thought actually the thing we should focus on is causing reputational damage to HP and making its brand toxic. And the reason for that is our experience is that companies, corporates care hugely about their brand. Their brand is everything to them. It's their, you know, they call it their DNA, their persona, their their values. Everything is enshrined in the brand. So if we can damage the brand, we damage the company. But also, as part of that, it's not just causing reputational damage for the sake of it. Uh, part of the strategy is we need to make sure that we tell the narrative, uh, which uh, Tamara has outlined about HP's role in segregation, apartheid, the siege of Gaza, prisons, settlements. So. In all, our H in all our BDS work, we have always tried to make sure that at the same time we're telling the story about the company, we're telling the story about the occupation, the Nakba, the ongoing Nakba, the oppression. Um, it's kind of obvious, but it, w our experience is that we've been successful where we've been targeted, focused, and persistent. So the other thing about the campaign plan was we need to do something which is going to be uh, hauling in for the long term. Um, long term may not be that long, it could be 12 months, it could be 24 months, but we need to have a plan that has persistent campaigning and we needed to come up with a strap line. Uh, as you can imagine, we had many, um, not many, quite a few hours of debating what the strap line should be. Uh, the one that we focused on was HP harms Palestinians, uh, but there were others that we looked at and I can talk about some that we looked at and didn't go with, but that's the one we went with. The next slide, having done all that, what does what would the campaign materials look like? This is just an example. We, uh, we produced thousands of these A6 postcards printed on good quality paper. 
Uh, A6 is a nice size for people to take. On the front, simple visual. And on the back, trying to say in as few words as possible something that I think all us campaigners find difficult, but trying to say in as few words as possible why HP, what it does, and then just as important, what action do we want people to take? So if you look at the uh, rear of the postcard, the text, it, it tries to do those two things. It tries to say what HP is doing, and it tries to tell people what it is that we can do. Uh, oh, sorry, we're asking people to do. Um, key part of campaigning is to think about, based on other campaigns as well, is to think about what and its brand. Uh, there are a whole list of pressure points. I mean, there are, there are a number. Here, Salim, the, your connection, we, at least for, for uh, me, went out for a moment. Um, if you uh, could try uh, again. Um, I've given you, I guess, that we uh, filtered down. Uh, we have focused on the resort, the four that we've got. The top other, are the other presenters having a hard time hearing him as well? Okay. Um, Salim, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? Um, Can any, Anna, or is it not? Oh, that's that much not, better. Uh, we were, you you were coming in and out in a, in a strange way. So um, if you could just back up a, a few sentences and try again and speak slowly if possible, that would be great. Just a couple sentences. Salim? Yes, hello, I'm here. Is that yes. can you hear me? Oh that's much that's much better. Would you mind trying again? Um, we caught most of what you said, but it's just the very end before I interrupted you that you were starting to go out. So just back up a bit and, and let's try again. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I think the, you know, the connection keeps coming in. There. Um, pressure points. So we need to think about where we can bring pressure to bear and where we have the resources to do it uh, and the time to do it in the first stage of the campaign. So we are focusing on those top four pressure points there. Um, consumers and businesses asking them to sign the pledge. Actually, we're going to want to tackle HP and, and Hewlett Packard Enterprises on, its own, on their own corporate and social responsibility policies. Schools and colleges, because there's already student, we know there's interest in student unions. Trade unions and civil society, because we have good contacts with those. Um, we will continue to look at pressure points. Uh, maybe new pressure points come up. We may hit a complete wall on any of those pressure points. I don't think we will, in which case we would review our plan and adjust accordingly. Um, this is just a screenshot. The, on the HP on our website, we have the pledge. It's a very simple pledge. Until HP ends its complicity in the illegal Israeli occupation, I will make this pledge. I pledge not to buy Hewlett Packard products, such as. Um, we've had about well, over 15,600 people have signed. And as you can see uh, from the screenshot of our website, we have places where people can sign either as companies or businesses, as organizations, or as individuals. And of course, we use that also to create mailing lists for the HP campaign. Um, so I talked about strategy. I talked about pressure points. Uh, there is a, a, you know, quite a bit to do on planning and organizing. Again, I don't think any of this is, is, will be news to people. We do have a steering group composed of uh, a mixture of people. It's about seven or eight, nine people, uh, some of whom are new to campaigning work, some of whom have experience in BDS campaigning work. We have regular meetings to plan and review actions, and we try to liaise closely with BNC. Um, key, key part of the campaign was also making sure we had a Facebook presence, website, and all the activist tools. And we have the activist tools on the website. I've listed some of those activist tools. Uh, I won't um, run through the list, but if you go to our website, and I'll give you the details for that in a minute, you can see the activist tools. Uh, HP, we also need to keep up momentum. It can't be just a one-off action. So we're trying to make sure that the HP campaign, and it is built in as an agenda item at every one of our national uh, executive committee meetings, and every time our branches uh, have a national or regional get-together. And the 
The other bit of our campaign uh, is we want to make sure that we uh, do coalition building, that's working with partner organisations in the UK, um, and also uh, the international campaign. Uh, this is just a screenshot from our website. Um, we have a number of pictures, four pictures, which uh, if you go onto the website, uh, flow across to show different aspects of uh, the impact of HP on Palestinians. And you can see at the top, we have start with why boycott HP, campaign news, and activist toolkit. And if you go into those sections, there's, uh, there's further details and the activist toolkit is there as well. Um, one of the things that we did as part of the campaign, BDS Italia, and I know Stephanie is on the call, they, BDS Italia produced a super video, uh, which I think is a, uh, only one minute long, uh, and they very kindly provided us with uh, English subtitles for that video, and we use that, uh, and continue to use that to uh, socialize and, uh, and mobilize uh, people around HP. Um, it's available on our Facebook page and on our website. It's, it's really worth looking at and uh, sharing if you can. Um, here's just a screenshot of our Facebook page. Again, uh, we, th uh, we thought about only having a website, but increasingly you need Facebook presence. So we have a Facebook page which pastes up news uh, and views, and you can actually sign up for the pledge from this Facebook site as well, and we post up the videos and stuff like that, and things like the National Day of Action. Um, the first major thing that we did was uh, mobilize for a day of action on 4th of June this year. Um, we took uh, two, probably three months to mobilize for that uh, through our national PSC and the branches, making the case for why HP is an important campaign and should be a priority. It was a good success actually. We had 25 actions across the UK, mainly outside stores and shopping areas. Um, we had a Twitter campaign the night before the campaign was launched, uh, directly addressing HP and HPE. Uh, we had, I think, over 2,000 messages sent to the companies via Twitter uh, in a couple of hours, and that was great. And then we did our review, and the review was good. Uh, I think people felt good at being part of a national campaign. They felt good about the materials. There were some tweaks that we did, uh, but it achieved what we wanted to do was that to put the HP campaign on the map and to start getting people uh, involved in it. Our next steps um, in our planning, and we have a planning meeting tomorrow, uh, we're very keen to support an international week of action. Uh, I think the most successful campaigns that we've had uh, in BDS have been in the international campaigns where we've had people across the world linking up. Uh, we do and will build the HP campaign into the regular ongoing activities of our branches. It sounds a strange thing to say, uh, why shouldn't it be? It's mainly because Palestine campaigners, certainly in the UK, have so many uh, campaigns and calls on their time. Uh, we want to make sure that HP, because it's our key BDS target, is built into their regular campaigning. Uh, we have loved uh, the, U the webinars, which uh, Anna and her team and US campaigners have organized, so we're going to uh, steal that idea, if you don't mind, and uh, organize a UK Stop HP webinar to build further momentum and involve some of our partners in the UK. And uh, as part of the International Week of Action, we're definitely down for doing something outside the November uh, trade event, which Hewlett Packard Enterprises is having in London for all its uh, IT customers uh, and um, and potential customers. So we'll be doing something on that. Um, I'm not going to talk to this, uh, but uh, on and, and I'm sure we can get the presentation to you. But uh, there's the links to the Facebook page, the website, and the video I mentioned. Um, we have also put up on the Google Docs uh, for which. Uh, the US campaign is set up. Uh, we've uploaded some of our graphics, the postcards which I showed you, but there are some others that we uh, have uh, have used from time to time, all basically around the same message, Hewlett Packard harms Palestinians. Um, although it's all been a national campaign, local branches and local groups have sometimes wanted to do their own, uh, and there's an example there, a flyer produced by a local group. It's, it's no problem at all. It's, uh, you know, the messaging is still there, HP harms Palestinians. They wanted to, to do it in a slightly different way uh, with the pictures, so that was fine. We, we, we uh, facilitated that. And uh, we have some stickers as well. People love stickers. Um, there's a strange comment there that says, not for fly posting. That's just a legal thing that we put up in the UK to show that we're not encouraging people to use the stickers, which is a bit strange. But um, 
uh, again, a consistent theme and message. And that is all I had. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Salim. That was so comprehensive and really uh, concrete ways that people can actually engage in this campaign. Um, and I, I know, have, you know, having worked a lot on SodaStream, which I know you worked a lot on in the, the UK, um, SodaStream became really a, a campaign that people could plug into um, fairly quickly and easily. And so we're hoping to, to make HP that kind of a, of a campaign as we develop more resources and more models. Um, so hopefully that provides some inspiration, and if you have questions for Salim, please do type them in via the questions feature, and he's agreed to um, try to work through those and respond. Um, our uh, third guest is Tariq Abu Jabara, who's a Palestinian Jordanian resident of Boston, and he studied electrical engineering and has over 10 years experience working for various tech tech companies, and he's currently on the board of directors of the NAAP, which is the Network of Arab American Professionals in Boston. He serves as president of the board both in Boston and nationally. He is a founding member of the New England Network for Justice in Palestine and active in the Massachusetts Against HP campaign, which he'll be telling us about today. So welcome to you, Tariq. Thanks, Anna, and thanks, everybody. Um, so as Anna mentioned, I'm active in the uh, Mass Against HP uh, campaign, so what I'll do is I'll walk through kind of how we started the campaign, what work has been done, and where do we want to go next. Um, as a group, we started looking at uh, BDS targets in Massachusetts about a year, year and a half ago. We originally wanted to go um, uh, to target uh, Motorola and Caterpillar, but those proved to be uh, tougher strategic uh, targets. Um, uh, for a number of reasons, but mainly because of the way the contracts are structured in Massachusetts with those companies. We then moved to uh, look at HP and we started researching it. We looked at the company profile in general. As Anna mentioned, the company is uh, being split up right now or is uh, has, has split up. Uh, we started looking at their work and as well as contract around the world and not just Massachusetts. And then we uh, honed in on uh, their contract in Massachusetts. All that uh, gave us um, a lot of flexibility in the way we could structure the campaign, and it, um, because of all the work that HP does around the world, not just in Israel, Palestine, but also in the U.S. or even in uh, China, Syria, and, and Iran, it gave us an opportunity to collaborate with other um, organizations or other, uh, other um, groups and build a broader coalition, which we will hope will help us in our uh, campaign. Um, so once we figured out um, what, what what HP is doing. We started looking at their contract in Massachusetts specifically and how it's structured. Um, the beauty of the contract, if, if beauty is the right word to say, is that it is a non-binding contract, meaning uh, the way it's structured in Massachusetts is that the state negotiates with suppliers on behalf of its municipalities, um, and these are non-binding contracts. Basically what happens is the state will negotiate a pricing list for 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 its uh, municipalities and then provides it to to, to its municipalities. Um, cities like Cambridge or Boston or Somerville then have the option to either buy from HP or from other suppliers based on this price list. Uh, it's a preferred price list basically. Um, the good part about that is now uh, when we are asking uh, municipalities or even the state to, to boycott HP and not buy uh, their products, they have alternatives. Um, with Motorola, for example, it was tough to provide alternatives, so with HP, it's easier to, to go to the municipalities and tell them, stop buying HP, you have other alternatives um, through your contract. Uh, and the fact that the contract is non-binding, meaning they, are not, they don't have to buy from HP, they can go to other um, companies. That allow, gives us some flexibility and, and, and hopefully will help us uh, convince um, the various cities, uh, as well as the state of Massachusetts, to boycott HP. Um, once we uh, figured out how the contract is structured, we started looking into where do we go next? Do we, do we go full on and uh, approach the state and ask them to even drop HP from their contract negotiations or do we go to various cities or municipalities and, and talk to them? Um, based on our research, we found it would be easier to build momentum before we go to the state of Massachusetts because that's going to be a tougher uh, sell. Um, we decided to start talking to various uh, cities or municipalities across the, the Boston area to try to convince them. Uh, we looked at, at um, which um, towns, which municipalities are spending the most, and we kind of found uh, four of them, um, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, and Brookline were the, the higher uh, spenders. So then we started looking into uh, which one uh, do we start with first. 
Uh, Cambridge was the easier choice for a number of reasons. Um, number one being the amount of money they spend, and number two, the, the profile of the city. It's a more liberal city. They're more um, inclined to, uh, to support uh, such, a, such a campaign or such a cause. And, it, and we had um, friends on the city council, to put it that way. We had allies on the city council that were helping us in understanding how to approach the, uh, the campaign. The ultimate goal of our campaign uh, in Cambridge and then across the, the state is to, uh, to have the city council as well as the state um, issue a resolution boycotting HP and not uh, similar to uh, previous resolutions during the uh, apartheid, uh, South, A South African apartheid era where uh, Cambridge and other uh, cities issued resolutions to boycott Polaroid and other, uh, as well as HP and other uh, companies. So that was our ultimate goal is to convince these cities to stop, uh, to, to issue the resolution and stop spending money in HP. Once we, once we decided on Cambridge as our initial um, target, we started uh, thinking how do we uh, approach that. Like I said, our ultimate goal is the resolution, but to get the resolution to pass, we have to present it to the city council, which has nine members, and we have to get a majority uh, vote um, on our side. Um, one key thing is um, we knew one of the city councilors uh, very well. He was a, he's a personal friend of a number of us, and he, um, he advised us on how to approach uh, the, the situation. And the biggest advice he gave us was to build um, on-the-ground support, to build uh, support from the residents of Cambridge as well as other activists, other groups, other um, campaigns um, across Cambridge as well as the state of Massachusetts. So with that in mind, we started uh, approaching, we started working on a number of parallel paths. Um, we decided to launch a petition asking um, Cambridge residents as well as um, people in Massachusetts in general to sign, uh, to sign the petition in support of the resolution. Our goal is to get at least a thousand um, Cambridge residents to sign on board. Um, historically we looked at petitions in Cambridge and if, if you get a thousand signatures that would be um, huge and that would be basically a petition that all the city councilors would pay attention to and consider seriously. Um, we also started asking for endorsements as well as support and even um, cooperation with other um, groups and activists similar to um, Black Lives Matter in, in Boston as well as other groups. Um, the goal here is to build a broad coalition that would also help us when we present the resolution. Um, we, we created a report, we created a report, a 10 page report detailing what HP does worldwide in Israel, Palestine, in Massachusetts in the US and specifically in Cambridge. And we, we've started uh, distributing that report. We created a, number, a lot of communication material. Um, the goal is we wanted our, our members uh, who are actively working on the campaign to have ready talking points that will assist them when approaching either, uh, you know, uh, asking people to sign the petition or the media or uh, university professors or anybody to have uh, ready, ready talking points that would help them in, 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 in their talk, in their, uh, in approaching people. Um, instead of having to think a lot or, or you know, not know the answers, that was uh, very useful for us. Um, so we moved from the report to talking points, we created the petition and we started basically canvassing across uh, Cambridge, Somerville, and a number of different towns. Uh, so far we've, we've had great success with it, we've had over 1,600 people sign the petition. About 75% of those, I would say, are Cambridge residents. So we're, we're well on our way to get the 1,000 signatures and we're continuing to canvas. The key thing uh, with the petition, obviously, is we are collecting uh, not only names and signatures, we're also collecting contact information um, with the goal of once the resolution is presented to the city council to ask these people to actually come out to the city council hearings in support of the uh, resolution. Um, once we, once we uh, in parallel to all the work about the with the petition, we. Uh, Similar to what Salim mentioned, we actually established a website, um, Facebook page, Twitter account to help spread the word. And I'll, I'll walk you through uh, all three of them um, shortly. Um, the next step for us was to understand um, the city councilor, city council members themselves and understand um, what their pressure points, to again, to borrow another uh, word from Salim, what their pressure points are or what their interests are to be able to convince them uh, to pass the resolution. So we're doing, right now we're in the midst of what we call our power mapping to understand each city councilor's, each city councilor's history, 
their the, the issues that interest them, as well as understand, uh, as well as set up meetings with them, with the hope of presenting the campaign to them and um, hopefully convincing them to vote on our sides. We're also reaching to potential um, allies, some university professors who, who have been um, sympathetic to the cause and supportive of it, um, as well as other uh, co uh, coalition members, as I mentioned. Um, we've also done a, a an event. Uh, to launch the campaign where we reached out to a lot of Cambridge residents. We had uh, Caroline Hunter who was um, one of the key leaders of the uh, boycott Polaroid campaign during the uh, uh, South African apartheid era and I believe she was on one of the webinars. Um, we had her speak, we had uh, a lot of, um, we had Code Pink as well speak, so those are all allies that we were, were, were bringing to the campaign to help in, uh, improve our, uh, our, our on the ground support. Um, after that, like I mentioned, we went on to canvassing for the petition. Um, during the canvassing, we've created, we have copies of our report and we have flyers that are, um, you could say, a condensed version of the report that we've been given out to, uh, to people to help, uh, to help them understand more what the campaign is all about. Um, our next step, as I mentioned, will be power mapping the uh, city councilors as well as influential uh, people in the, in the city of Cambridge um, and then schedule meetings with them to help um, convince them and once we feel that we've got we've built enough momentum we have um, a good chance in passing the resolution we will then submit a resolution to the city of Cambridge to asking it to boycott HP and stop spending any money on it um, and hopefully we'll get that pa to pass with the majority vote of the nine uh, city councillors um, that's in a nutshell what we've done so far and what our next steps uh, are um, one thing we've thought about in the in the campaign is what does winning look like? Uh, from the get-go, uh, we always said that our ultimate goal is to obviously um, get the resolution to pass in Cambridge and then move on to other cities and eventually to the state of Massachusetts. However, we're also realistic that it's not an easy fight, so we're going to um, we are we're going to try to get the resolution passed. If it, if it doesn't pass, we're going to um, work on spreading the word about HP and um, again as, as the previous two uh, speakers mentioned damage the reputation of HP and, and get as, uh, as much publicity, negative publicity for HP as possible in the local media. Um, again with the hope that people will realize um, their, their, the, how toxic the company is and, and start boycotting it. So this is an, in a nutshell is what we're doing. Um, I'll share my screen very quickly to uh, to kind of walk you through the the website and what we've um, what we've done so far. Um, so let me show my screen here. Can everybody see my screen? Uh, okay. Yes. So yes, we can. Right, so but Tadek, we have almost yeah. um, you're almost out of time. So just all right. be aware of that. Very quick, all right. Very quickly. So what we've done is created a website. It's uh, massagainsthp.org. In there, we basically uh, ask people to sign the petition. Uh, as you can see, we've got 1,640 uh, signatures so far. We want to reach 2,000 uh, with the hope that at least half of those will be Cambridge residents. We talk about YHP, and then we have our report, which, um, which is uh, mentioned here. And like I said, uh, we talk about HP in general, uh, their work in Israel, Palestine, in the U.S., worldwide, in Massachusetts, and in Cambridge. And then we ask um, for endorsements. This, these could be organization, uh, organizations in general, not necessarily uh, individuals. For individuals, we're asking them to sign the petition. Um, we have our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash massagainsthp. Um, and then we have our Twitter page as well, which is um, our handle is massagainsthp. The goal, obviously, is to spread, as much, uh, spread the word as much as possible about the campaign. Um, with that uh, said, that's all I've got, so I'll hand it back over. Thanks, everybody. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tariq. Um That was really exciting to hear some of the nuts and bolts of the campaign, and um, I know um, I've been captivated by the campaign since I first heard about it, so it's a great model. Um, and we'll be sending some of these links in the follow-up, and you can send in your questions to Tariq now. Um, so uh, our uh, last, last but not least, we have Garrett Ruiz, who's the North American liaison for the 
uh, Palestinian BDS National Committee, the BNC, which is the largest coalition in Palestinian civil society. And Garrett works with local and national partners throughout North America to support BDS campaigns and is helping to coordinate the HP campaign worldwide. And he'll be sh sharing some more models and ideas for HP campaigns. Um, and just, you know, he's the final presenter. I don't know that we'll have much time for questions, maybe none, um, but you can always start raising your hand just on that off chance. But better is to, to send in your questions using the question feature. All right, welcome, Garrett. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. And uh, really exciting to hear uh, what's been going on uh, in different, some of the different local campaigns on this webinar. Um, I want to thank all the presenters uh, for being here and, and sharing ideas. Um, so I'm going to try to go very quickly. So hopefully we have time for one or two uh, questions. Um, but And especially because primarily I just... Yes. Eric, I would just say that there's been tons of questions coming through and, and I think you'll, I think it's okay to, to prioritize the, the content because we've got lots of people asking questions. And if you're calling by phone, you can also email them to Rama to make sure we get you to. Great, thanks. Um, so in terms of just kind of recapping and looking at, uh, or, and even taking a step back and looking at HP, um, the big picture around HP now that we've heard from some kind of very, uh, both local and, and national campaigns, um, one of the things, you know, one of the primary things I just want to communicate to everyone on the webinar is that we in the, the BNC are certainly seeing HP as a priority campaign for a number of reasons and are definitely, as has kind of been talked about, investing um, some of our resources in uh, building this campaign and, and, and building uh, things that people can, can use in their local campaigns. Um, one thing is that with, you know, with Notable exceptions, some of which we've heard on this uh, call today, HP um, has largely been targeted through inclusion on lists of, you know, corporations to divest from uh, uh, resolutions passed by, by students on university campuses um, within different church denominations. And by no means uh, do we want that work to stop. Um, one, of the, one of the great things about HP is they're vulnerable on many different levels. Um, both on the divestment level, which those kind of resolutions target, but also, as we've heard today, on the consumer boycott level, um, as well as through the canceling of contracts um, uh, with municipalities or other institutions um, as well. Um, we heard about the, the municipal campaign targeting Cambridge um, in Massachusetts. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, depending on, on the strengths of your local group, on the, the particular situation you face in your country and in your locality, um, to think about what, is, what are the most effective ways to take on HP. <clears throat> um, and certainly uh, I, the BNC, and, and Anna with the U.S. Campaign are, are here, um, as well as the network that has that has formed around HP to kind of help you think through some of those questions and, and what should a campaign look like. So please, if you're, if you're having those conversations, if you have questions in your locality, please uh, be in touch with us. Um, another thing uh, why we think it's so important right now to really keep the pressure on HP right at this moment um, is uh, what was talked about um, by a couple of the presenters, that HP has split as a corporation and is in uh, kind of a restructuring mode where more kind of restructuring is likely to happen over the next couple of years. What that means is that they're in a particularly vulnerable point um, because they're trying to sell parts of their, their companies, you know, they're, they're needing to look good um, to other corporations um, and to other entities that they're trying to negotiate with. And so the more we can do, as, the, as previous presenters talked about, the more we can do to damage their brand overall, um, the more we can kind of cause them problems in that aspect of their business, um, which just adds into the overall uh, BDS campaign targeting them. Um, uh, another thing uh, that, that a few groups have brought up, um, local groups that I hadn't thought about until they put it on my uh, radar screen, is that HP um, cares about its reputation as a socially responsible corporation. Um, and so 
Uh, because they, they care, and because we've seen in the media that they care about this, that means it's a, it's a place where they're vulnerable again. The more we can show that they're not actually socially responsible, the more we can highlight their crimes in Palestine, the more we can highlight their crimes around the world, um, uh, harming freedom of movement, not only of Palestinians, but of, of prisoners in different parts of the world, immigrants in the US. Um, the more we can do that, um, the more, you know, again, it harms that, that image as a socially responsible company. Um, again, just putting more pressure on them. Um, so in my last few minutes here, I just want to run through a few different kind of action ideas beyond uh, some of these are going to echo um, what we heard from other presenters, but some um, also thinking uh, about some other possibilities. Um, one thing, uh, this isn't so much an action, but something to keep in mind whenever you're planning, um, is that, again, one of the reasons why HP looks so good to the BNC is that it is a target um, that's curtailing freedom of movement of many people around the world. Um, and so there are potentials to build alliances, to build campaigns with other sectors, not necessarily specifically Palestine solidarity groups. And so as you build local campaigns, um, it's always important to keep that in mind. And one of the first things you might want to think about doing is, is are there any groups targeting the prison system locally to where you are? And do you want to, before launching a campaign, reach out to them and see if, see if there are ways um, that there might be some kind of mutual support. Always uh, important whenever doing that work to come at it humbly, right, that we don't come with all the answers or the, the uh, perfect reason why HP is, is the great uh, target for them, but rather to come in and have these conversations. Um, in terms of some specifics, um, because of their uh, effect on freedom of movement in particular, um, mock checkpoints are one of the ideas that people have kind of thrown out there, something that students have used very effectively on campus. Um, but mock checkpoints um, are a great way, you know, setting up a checkpoint with, with a big HP visual um, or having someone in uniform with like an HP logo um, or both, something like that is a great way to show very visually to shoppers, for example, going into a store, <clears throat> what effect um, buying HP products has around the world. Um, uh, this probably doesn't need to be said um, because many people have used it for uh, SodaStream and many other products, um, but leafleting and bannering outside of retailers may seem like a very basic uh, kind of thing to do, but it's great in that anyone anywhere can kind of plug into it, right? There's a retailer selling HP products near you, um, and so it's easy to go out to a store and do some educational work with folks. And, and we have found that this kind of, you know, again, it sometimes can seem small, sometimes there's just a few people doing it, but what we have found is those interactions with the stores, um, particularly store management, does move up the corporate ladder, right? Like if a retailer is facing kind of a demonstration outside of their store because they're stocking HP products, the HP person they work with is gonna hear about it. Um, and that's what we want to start to see more and more of. Um, and so, of course, letters, uh, you know, combined with that, letters or meetings with store managers are great things to think about as well. Um, one very great idea that's come out of a couple of local groups, um, it, you know, in the U.S. in particular, there are several U.S. denominations, uh, Christian denominations, that have passed resolutions that include HP as a target, right, um, include uh, divestment from HP. And so one thing that local groups are looking at is going to local parishes, local congregations of those denominations um, and asking them, similar to what uh, Salim was talking about, asking them to sign pledge, pledges um, that they will no longer, you know, if they have HP printers, that they will purchase generic HP cartridges rather than, than official HP cartridges and that they will not you know, uh, replace their technology, whether it's printers or laptops um, with HP products until the company uh, uh, stops profiting from human rights violations in Palestine. Um, and finally on, on actions, I would just say again that the more actions, the more kind of things that HP hears about, the more that's going on around the world, you know, the more buzz that's created, the stronger we all are. So one of the best things people can do wherever you are 
um, is that if you have even a little bit of capacity to start working on HP, think about um, what can you do, um, what, 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 uh, what capacity do you have, and what can you draw on some of us who are trying to provide support to do, um, and get moving, right? The more actions we see, the, the stronger we all are. Um, and I will end there. Um, we're getting very close uh, to the end, but I would just reiterate um, a couple things coming up. There will be an international petition um, launched by late October. Um, uh, so keep, you know, keep uh, your eyes open for that. Um, and definitely, if you're not on um, any of the HP lists already connected with any of the groups that are organizing HP campaigns, please do be in touch with us. And Anna, maybe you want to put up the uh, that resource slide now. I'm way ahead of you. Um, oh, it's up. Ah, gotcha. Um, so Anna and my email is on there, so please uh, be, feel free to be in touch with, with either of us with questions or thoughts. Um, and then again, just to reiterate um, what Anna had said at the beginning, we, the uh, HP International Boycott Network um, has decided on November 25th through December 3rd as Days of Actions that will be announced publicly soon. Um, but that's something to think about. It stretches from Black Friday, the day after the Thanksgiving holiday in U.S., um, through the London HP conference uh, that Salim mentioned, um, and to the first Saturday in December um, to hit some of the Christmas shopping season. Um, so those are days that, that many groups around the world will be engaged in action, and you might want to think about doing something locally as well. Um, and finally, just to say that um, for those in the U.S. Um, at the U.S. Campaign to End the Israeli Occupations Conference, October 14th through 16th, um, there will be um, an HP webinar specifically geared around local HP campaigns um, uh, that the BNC and others will be uh, facilitating, uh, and there will be many other uh, conversation there around HP as well. Um, so that's something for groups in the U.S. Just one final plug, if you can make it to that that conference, it'll be a great uh, time to have in-person conversations around HP. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks to all the presenters, and thanks especially to Anna and, and Rama, who's not uh, pictured from the U.S. campaign, who have helped out with the, the tech for uh, this webinar and making all this happen. Thank you so much, Derek. Um, so um, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this important webinar. I wanted to lift up a, a question that came in from Maxine, which was, are we asking retailers to also stop stocking HP as we did with SodaStream? If it isn't clear, yes, absolutely, that can be a great model for a campaign. So I hope this webinar has convinced you of just how um, versatile HP is as a target and that perhaps there's a way of finding how you and your community could plug into this campaign in a way that makes, makes sense in your context. So many, many thanks to all the presenters. Um, if you haven't had your questions answered yet, we can try to get them answered after the close of this, but I'd like to keep it um, the recording to under an hour and um, hope to see those of you who are in the U.S. at our upcoming conference. Um, thanks to everybody for joining and be well.